Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have Ben Bedick, and he is an amazing person. He does a ton of different things. I always say uh, some of our, our, our uh, people that come on the show are, are experts. They have like a ton of hats that they wear, and <laughs> he is one of them, and he is his main goal is really to help others, help others overcome challenges, the things that we go through in life, and he shows you different ways of overcoming challenges in life because we're going through a lot in, in this world today, and there's so much going on, and many people have obstacles that really come about, and they just don't know what to do, and, and if you don't help yourself in time time and need, things just get worse. And Ben's goal is to help you before those things get worse. He works with many companies, organizations, people one-on-one, -on -one, and he's here today to introduce himself, tell you a little about himself and all the wonderful things he does. So Ben, take it away. Tell everybody a little <laughs> about yourself and what you do. <laughs> Thank you so much, Stacey. It's an honor to be here. And as I uh, as I said to you uh, before we, we went live here, I'm just super grateful to be on your platform to share some space with you today and and wanted to congratulate you on all of your success, which is tremendous. Mm -hmm. And the light that you provide for other people is, is something that will continue to grow brighter and brighter. And I'm honored to be here to be a small part of that. So uh, a little bit about me is early in life, I uh, experienced some things where I um, understood very quickly that life is not always a a spectacular, glorious experience that there can be suffering that happens, that that people are, go through things, that there are health challenges, that uh, that people that we care about are not here forever, and that we are not here forever, and that uh, as we learn those lessons, it really makes a stark awareness in us that we need to make each moment count. We need to um, be aware that this is not forever, uh, to our knowledge, uh, and and when we invest in that, we live a life of significant legacy, of significant meaning, of significant purpose. So for about 40 years, the first half of my life is, or, or however long I get, I, I would say the first 40 years of my life was a time of really exploring different things, of not, of wanting to do everything. So it was very hard to pick, you know, one career path, whatever that necessary, necessarily looked like. It was very difficult to choose because, as you said, I'm interested in everything there is. Yeah. So what I did was, in the meantime, until I could figure out what those things were, I focused on service. So there was a number of different ways that I've served in a variety of different capacities, uh, largely in the medical field, in mental health, in crisis response, in uh, I was a medic in the United States Army during the Global War on Terror. Uh, I have done uh, hostage crisis negotiation, crisis work, um, and served as a nurse in correctional facilities, in uh, county jails, in now, uh, basically, I've worn a number of different hats, uh, but I all all of it was built upon how can I give something of value? I've been given a ton to in my life, and I have been given the opportunity to be alive and aware of it, mm -hmm. which is absolutely miraculous to me. So I uh, feel a sense of gratitude for that, and I want to make it count. I want to give back, and I also know that. Uh, it's not, and, and that paired with the, the reality that life is not necessarily forever in the form that it is, uh, wanting to make it count. So after about uh, four decades of, of service, of looking around, of trying to understand, of seeing what builds people up, what tears them down, what creates powerful legacies, what creates connection, what destroys us slowly or, or quickly, uh, you know, whether it's warfare, whether it's alcoholism, whether it's hatred, whether it's uh, isolation, uh, digging into all of these concepts. And then after a certain point of time, I felt ready that that if there was something that I was going to say, I felt that I had something that had enough value to it that, that I could give to people, that I could give to this world. Um, so I, I began to do that. And one of the first things, uh, one of the first uh, developments that came out of that uh, that the universe offered uh, in a way that I was very humbled and um, grateful for was an opportunity to tell the story of Adam Greenberg, who is a former Major League Baseball player. He has one of the most unique stories in the history of Major League Baseball, where in his first plate appearance of his first Major League at bat, uh, he stepped into the batter's box. His lifelong work, he had spent you know decades of daily intensive work to 
to ascend to the heights of becoming a major league athlete, right? That the, the very few people, I think there's, uh, depending on the stats now, but when I did the research a few years ago, it was 18,000 people total in the history of the world who had played major league baseball. He was one of them. And he was uh, taking the field and in his first pitch of, of his major league career, uh, the ball came uh, close. It was high, high and inside and he turned away from it and under the helmet, it hit his head directly uh, on his head, which obviously caused change immediately with that amount of men- momentum of a 92 mile an hour fastball. It uh, made changes to his those delicate bones in your inner ear that deals with our balance. Yeah. It made changes to his vision, which as you know, for a major league baseball player, they have a, barely a split second to make a decision on whether or not they're going to swing the bat to potentially hit the ball and have success in that in that. Uh, role and they only have this amount of time to perform because it's a business and if you can't perform you're out so so he basically turned was struck with the 92 mile an hour fastball in the back of the head it uh, made some severe changes Uh, this was before concussion protocols in the major leagues so he went down um, and basically felt like he was holding his head together he was in a place internally where he thought he was about to die and uh and uh, he he has quite a story from there about getting back to the major leagues uh, for an official at bat in a Marlins uniform after appearing as a Chicago Cub. But then I was able to help him tell his life story and provide hope to people in in that way. And from there, it's just been um, investing in people who are dealing with challenges. Um, yeah. You know, resilience building. Those are, those are basically. Uh, that's a little bit of a synopsis of of where I've been and what led to um, the beginnings of our conversation here. Wow, that is some story. You know, sometimes when we are hit curveballs, literally in our lives, you know, our lives can change completely. And yeah. we all, you know, most people for for you know have dreams and aspirations. They have a an idea in their head of what they want to do and ho- what they hope to accomplish. And we don't think of the what ifs or the things that could happen to us. And when they do happen, you know, a lot of times we're unprepared, so we don't know how to handle it. And yeah. it can be very devastating, most mentally and physically. And, you know, I remember writing an article and I, you know, I talked about a, a disorder and I asked, you know, what what bothers you more? Is it, it, it the emotional aspect, you know, dealing with it mentally or is it the physical aspect? And yeah. it was really you had a, like, almost like a 50, 50, because some people Mm -hmm. emotionally just couldn't handle not being able to be who they once was. And they had people physically who were hurting from what they were suffering from. And, you know, the pain was just, you know, they, they had a hard time dealing with the pain and and the suffering. So it really, it, it affects people in so many different ways. But the thing is, is that it affects us, it affects our lives. It affects us everything mentally, physically, spiritually. And, you know, so it's like, you know, how do you deal with these things? You know, you know, people, people want to go to work. They want to do things. They want to feel accomplished. You know, that's the, that's the average individual, you know, and Things go, you know, kind of, you know, come in your way and you can't be the person who you really want to be, you know, mm-hmm. how do you deal with that? That's a, that's, that's really tough. You know, that's a tough situation to be in. And even Absolutely. as a baseball player, to all the work and dedication that you had to put mm-hmm. into and to be chosen, you know, and then to have that split second change your entire life. Yeah, uh, exactly. It, it's, it's speechless. It is. It is. It's overwhelming. And and I like that you talked about that, that we we often form an identity based on what we can do. Mm-hmm. And and we we form these these beliefs about ourselves and we often get the idea that this will be this way forever mm-hmm. or or that this will never go away. And and those big changes can be traumatic. Uh and so that's that's one of the things that's really satisfying for me. Um is especially and I like that you brought up that dichotomy so that in the medical field. Uh, currently the way it's practiced, I guess, in my area of the world is things are put into these little categories, you know, and, and mental health is one. And, but if you break your arm, 
you know, it's, 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 we fix the bone and then we send you out or, or this or that. But, but I like what you've said that, that there's a mix there. The human being is both, in, is, has emotions, has, uh, is reeling with potential trauma. A bone break for one person is not a big deal. Hey, I'm going in, I get a cast, I get splinted, whatever it is. And I'm out for a few weeks and I'll be back at it. Right. Another person that can be obliterating to their personal identity. It can, yeah that broken arm could mean that they can't play piano anymore. And they're a concert pianist who uh, ha has a phenomenal, um, you know, history yeah. there of, of accomplishing amazing things. So that's what I've really liked is the deal, especially in the medical space or the mental health space what, that I found a lot of su um, success and, and fulfillment in is bridging those gaps so that when people come in, or they're dealing with uh, challenges that we can teach resilience concepts, or we can give them that ability to emote, to share how they're feeling about it, to process those emotions that come with a grief process or a loss. You know, yeah. if, if, if they have a loss of an ability, that's, that's a different thing. Is it, it does it mean it's a change of their entire career? Right. Does it mean they're just down for a few days and they're back at it? What is that? And so to incorporate that mental health section of things that is often easily categorized, okay, go over here and do this and mm -hmm. then go over here and do this and see this specialist, whatever. I love bringing that together in a way, like you're saying, of of understanding the, the, the depth that can happen when there's an injury. And, and in when I've dealt, when I've been working with um, cancer, cancer survivors, during that whole process of treatment of cancer, they have this whole team around them of that's monitoring their nutrition, that's helping mm -hmm. them with chemotherapy, that's helping them with nausea or this or that, or helping them or their caregiver at that point where, you know, dealing with the mental health of that caregiver and fusing those things together, because once that team drops away and they get, you know, healed or cured or it's in remission or they rang the bell or whatever, it's, it's ultra deflating for people to have that whole team. And then all of a sudden that team is gone. Yeah. And it's like, okay, you're well now. It's like that, that, that we have, we could do better. Yeah. Right. Oh, <laughs> definitely. And I, you know what I find? And, and one thing that bothered me when I was doing a lot of writing articles um, and, and looking for solutions, you know, um, they had a lot of information about the, um, what it is, the treatment, mm -hmm. the symptoms, yeah you know, and all this other good stuff, but nobody talked about how to cope. And that mm. was one thing, even if you go on the internet today, you know, people, they are now people are starting to write about it, but you still, we lack it in our society. When people yeah. are going through things, they need to learn how to cope. There's a need, there is a, a urge. People, you know, have something going on with themselves, but they just don't know how to cope with it. And that's yeah. so important because if you don't know how to cope with something, it could lead yep. to something else, you know? That's it. And we had even mentioned, you know, that the, in every in every category there is a, a certain percentage of suicide rates because yeah, there right. is that cluster uh, of people who just give up because they just don't yeah. know how to cope. You know, yeah. you find that in every community, you know, every yeah. every community there is a percentage because, yeah. you know, and then some communities are higher than others, but you know that shows you that something needs to be done more than what we're doing that we Absolutely. really need to teach people coping skills and how yes. to cope with challenges, how to cope with illness, how to cope with mental health illnesses, physical issues, you know, and, 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 and how to just help people through the, the tough times, even if the, it goes back into their childhood roots to their, yeah. you know, it's yeah. something traumatic happening in their life. It interferes yeah. with their current state of mind, their current, yeah. you know, living, you know, and, and that's what we need to do is I think, I think we lack that. And I, I think, I and agree. It, and it affects, you know, like you talk about how you go into organizations and you help organizations and you help companies and stuff like that. Well, those those people who work there, those employees, you know, they have a tough time coping and it, and it could be for various reasons. But if we if we gave them the right coping skills, maybe yeah. they would be able to perform better. Yeah, I agree a thousand percent. And it's so vital, especially for medical staff, um, especially post COVID. We had so many uh, medical staff, frontline medical staff who are literally seeing people die at a mass casualty rate from COVID, uh, the psychological toll that that took on, on people. And now we have 10 million less people in the workforce of 
many baby boomer generation workers had either been forced out, chose to retire, were like, forget it, I'm done with this. Uh, lack of leadership, lack of support, lack of respect in our workplace. And, uh, and then all that institutional knowledge went out the door. You have people who were doing so much, who are working 12 hour shifts, who are basically facing um, all of these overwhelming things, all of these overwhelming experiences, right? And we know that what creates post-traumatic stress is basically a feeling of, of horror or terror, a, a sense of severe horror or terror mixed with helplessness, right? Mm -hmm. So if you if you are mandated, I got to go to work. I mean, the community is is relying on me. I'm dealing with families who are losing loved ones. I have to be there. And then we have the the part of our workforce that we don't do a very good job of self care, or we don't do a very, or, or our leaders, or our employers don't often do a great job of ensuring that we have time off, self care, doing what we need to do to keep ourselves healthy. Because when we do have that, we have longevity, we have consistency of service, we have careers that create legacies, and we have health along the way. And um, you know the common the common. A metaphor for it is that the plane experiences uh, some turbulence or whatever it is, and the oxygen mask pops down. And if you go to put that oxygen mask on somebody else, guess what? You're going to be passed out and everybody's going to be working on you exactly. um, to try to get that done. So first of all, you put that on yourself. If you're not able to take care of yourself, you're not able to take care of others. And uh, and so that that is a conversation I love having with leaders who are having challenges or just want people to do what they say, or, uh, you know, who just, I, who, who want to kind of cling to this ethos of, of I'm in charge and what I say goes, and they have this overly rigid uh, system that is basically they're sabotaging themselves because they're not caring for the health of those who work there. And in fact, when they learn some lessons about incorporating, like you said, coping skills, resilient skills. And that's what I love about your program. Um, you're focusing on that denial and getting to that place of acceptance, helping helping not only our staff, but the clients that we serve. Uh, we give the people that we serve better service when we take care of ourselves and our staff. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the things that, that pops up is I would do work with a, a family that's dealing with a, in an ER or um you know, something along those those lines or where they needed support. And oftentimes staff would say, hey, can I talk to you a minute? Like staff would be aching for what was being given to clients and things like that. And so once we can put that in the hands of staff and empower staff to, to wield tools wisely of empathy, of compassion, of non-judgmental listening, um, of being there for your staff, employers and leaders in whatever form they're in, then reap the, the return on that investment, which is loyalty. Yeah. which is devotion, which is a sense of fulfillment and legacy, which is a healthy staff that rarely calls in sick because they're yeah. like, uh, unless, unless they need to, but, but, and they would be like, my team's depending on me, I'm going to be there for them. And then also having healthy balances and boundaries there where they need to take care of themselves at certain times. Right. But, but, uh, but they're not in crisis They're and the, the, they're not dealing with things that are so overwhelming that, um, that they're out for a week or two weeks at a time because they're like you were saying, you know, the immune system breaks down and yeah. that's and they're in that constant sympathetic nervous system where it's cortisol and adrenaline and this and that and and then self-medicating with alcohol to try to regulate that and bring themselves down, not knowing how yeah. to do it themselves. Like these are the cycles and the spirals that it's fun to interrupt because we know the cost of them. They're lethal. Yeah. They are legitimately lethal. And oh, so 100%. to yeah. Yeah. And I like so how great. you brought up. Yeah. I, I like how you brought yeah. up self-care because I've heard so many people, especially mothers um, or even people that just have a care in heart, they feel guilty to yeah. care for themselves before they care for others. They're more like people pleasers. You know, mothers automatically have that care and instinct to take care of everybody. Yeah. Then you have fathers or you have people who just want to please and, and love the people they care for, or they just have that personality where they just want to please, you know, and they're taking care of everybody around them, but they're yeah. the one person they don't take care of is themselves. And at the right. end, they, they're the ones who get hurt. And I always say like you do, you can't help others if you can't help yourself first, because yeah. 
it's just, it's it just way the way, and you shouldn't feel guilty and you shouldn't feel that you're being selfish, but you have to take care of yourself. You have to, you know, you have to have that resilience. You have to have a, a, a good, good, you know, feel, feel worthy of yourself and have good self-esteem and be cl clear and focused and, and, and all to have all these things, you have to take time out to renew. Yeah, I agree a hundred percent. And, and I, as I, I share that uh, opinion a hundred percent. That's that's the thing. It's it's very noble for us to put our needs aside for a duration of time to help someone like children. Uh, you know, it, it's not easy. It's uh, you're sleep deprived. Your your body's going through so many changes, especially as a mother, as you're dealing with with all of of the things that happen with with pregnancy, childbirth, um, postpartum. Uh, processes, all of those things that are happening, and then the the changes in your family dynamic and uh, and sleep deprivation and all of those things, and it's very noble. Or or and and in people who serve right in different ways, like we're talking about nursing staff or first responders, who by the way have a higher suicide, they die more by suicide than they do in line of duty deaths, right? Wow. So, and and the veteran community is having an epidemic uh, level of, uh, of a suicide rate, you know, as 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 most people know. But it's when we set our needs aside for a duration of time or for an honorable sacrifice to help others, that's a beautiful and wonderful, noble thing oftentimes. But when it becomes our norm where we neglect ourselves and we say, I'm not worth it. Or if we have any trauma where we're dealing with self-hatred or uh, shame or deep-seated guilt or uh, negative messages by people who it would have been better if they would have been loving and kind to us, but for whatever reason, we're not, you know, and we set this aside or we take this on as, as if everyone else's needs are more important than my own. Right. We put ourselves into this, this dark place, um, and oftentimes what that does is it leads to our demise often slowly yes. um, and off sometimes often quickly. And oftentimes it, it becomes, how do I get back? Like it becomes a more, when it becomes a moral concept, I see that as, as very problematic often where people get the reward. Oh, you're selfless. Your sacrifice is amazing. We honor you. We do that for veterans, right? We do that for war heroes. We do that for uh, you know, we say, oh, you're an amazing mother. You, It's amazing how, you know, you have it all together and you seem perfect. When inside, they may be dying inside just from postpartum depression or or it was a struggle to even get out of bed that day because they're they're dealing with so many different things or, or it's, you know, whatever it is, all of these challenges, if we're not able to cope with them and we set aside our own health, we, unfortunately, it's the truth that we do we do lose ourselves and, yeah. and, and caregivers often die before the person that they care for because the, of giving and burnout and sympathetic nervous system, chronic stress and, uh, or, or self-medicating with alcohol. We talked about suicide a little bit. Oftentimes yeah. suicide is an impulsive action. And when it's done with a firearm, it's extremely effective because that's what firearms were designed to do. And so, uh, if, if we're, self-medicating with alcohol, which is a depressant, it reduces our inhibitions. Mm -hmm. And so if we're having, and we're reeling with those suicidal thoughts or that deep seated anguish or not seeing a way out yeah, and an attempt is made with a lethal means, uh, because it's more impulsive, because you're under the influence of certain things, um, it makes it happen more often. And yeah. it's very common. It's way too common. So that amount of pain it's powerful to do these interventions and to build that trust initially to say, these are normal processes. People are going through this. Yeah. And when you're dealing with that amount of stress, it's vital that you care for you because you matter just as much as everyone else. And so that takes some digging in there a little bit about exploring, like, why, why are you being hard on yourself? How is this taught to you? How do you see value in that? And and you may and maybe some rewards are very very satisfying, but maybe we just need to dial that back a little bit and just bring a little more balance there, so that um, so that the pain recedes a little bit, and your service is selfless and beautiful, but at the same time, it's not self harm. Yes, Does that makes sense. Yeah. Oh, it makes total sense. And when someone is feeling all this stress and they're going through all these things in their life. What's a good way, some tools and techniques to really dive deep into yourself, to start understanding what you're going through and to start relieving that stress? 
Sure. Yeah, I think, um, and and you're you're a, a pro at helping people with this, and so you know, feel free to to throw in your insights here too. Um, the things that I find, you know, are that are so helpful is first of all giving yourself permission, right? To say that you're worthy of that, that you yeah. deserve that, that you need that, and and there's nothing wrong with it. In fact, it's vital for your health. Like, um, if 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 you're for, if, sometimes it's easier for people who are really other oriented yeah. to say. If you saw someone suffering, if you saw your sister or your child or your brother or your grandparent or your spouse, whatever it is, if you saw them suffering, uh, what would you say to them? And then you, you you communicate to them, well, why, what what do you think if I had said that to you? Like, do you deserve it? Oh, no, I can't. I can't. And, you know, or whatever it is and say, mm-hmm. you know, first of all, getting people to the point where they need to know that they matter yeah, and that um, it's important that, that they have a choice to make here and that they have to, they have to come to the table. And so sometimes the first barrier is just to get them to believe that they're worth it or to believe that they're, that um, it's important and that, that it's for them. Yeah. And then once they acknowledge, you know, um, okay, I could do better. I, I, I could, I could reduce the suffering in my life a little bit. I could right. um, learn some more skills. Then it, it's an open dialogue, a non-judgmental dialogue. It's it, it's it's this is about them doing their very best to succeed. This is them using the skills they've been taught through life, whether they're healthy or not, to survive. Mm-hmm. Right. And and the miracle is that they're here now. Like I used to go to county jails. And I used to to talk with uh, people who had been trafficked. Yeah. And I used to just start with, um, or, or it would be in the ER where they would just attempted suicide or, or whatever it is, or it would start as a conflict, you know, or something had become so heated or so, uh, there was some crisis that occurred that had just spiraled everything into chaos and, and or violence or whatever it was. Yeah. And, and just starting that with a calm space of non-judgment, just be like, Hey, I'm just here to talk. I'm just here to talk. I want to understand what happened and help you understand what happened. If I can, yeah. Um, if you want to talk, I'm here uh, how, to whatever degree. And then it's just building that trust. And oftentimes it just weaves its way back through um, burdens that they've carried for decades um, where it stemmed from a traumatic event during childhood or um, some form of abuse or neglect or um, a substance use addiction to various various things that they use to try to cope and then it's just or, or even if it's just I mean those are those are pretty extreme examples that maybe not a lot of people have um, maybe that doesn't necessarily resonate with a ton of people who may be listening maybe but but it's also the same concepts where it may not be as severe as that where it may be like literally a person has lost their job and they don't know who they are, who they're going to be. They don't know what they're going to say to their friend or family member or the children who need to be fed. You know, they don't know what's happening. Some form of crisis is happening there where their coping systems are overwhelmed. Yeah. And so it, it's along those lines of just like, I'm here to listen and let's let's start to have that dialogue. But first, they, we it's a powerful message to communicate at the outset, in my opinion, yeah. that, that helps get them to that point of acceptance quicker. Yeah. Is, is is compassion is like, look, I'm no, I'm, I'm not a, you know, I'm not here to wave a wand over anything. I'm just here to be present. And that presence oftentimes non-judgmental presence opens a bit of a door. And from there it's, it can be pure light entering that room dependent on where they're at and what they're willing to accept and what they're willing to explore. But from then it's like building in resilience concepts, whether it's mindfulness, meditation, whether it's, um, um, just concepts of understanding we are not our thoughts, whether it's it's um, just creating support around them, whether it's decreasing their alcohol intake, whether yeah. it's it's just small things. I'm of a fan of like the Kazen approach where you do something small and it and then you just forget to stop. Like those yeah. those types of things are, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on this because with your expertise. But that's some of the things that I've found. You know, and when we're at that early stage of building trust, yeah. Um, you know, can I be there for you? You know, 
And I, I think those are great suggestions because I think people have, I see so many people making the mistake of telling somebody what they should do. And it's yeah. not, it's not, that's not going to work. Nobody right. wants to be told what to do. Yeah. You know, you really have to let that person figure it out. And, and by, by reversing it in a very subtle way, you make, you make that person think for a second because the answer is there. It's it just is. in the time, once you, clear your mind and you clear everything and you start to really think about the situation you will find that answer you will yeah. figure it out it will come to you you know yeah. i always say like we were talking about before our body talks to us our body gives yeah. us messages we just yeah. don't always pay attention and that's the problem right. or we're not connected with ourselves that's why i always like to suggest med meditation to people too i think it's a great sure. way for both men and women to take a moment mm -hmm to calm themselves, even in the morning, if they could just square out a little bit of time before they start yeah. the day and just clear their mind with some breathing exercises. I think breathing yeah. exercises are so important just to slow down the breathing, slow down your thinking process, slow everything down and just yeah. let everything go. Just, you know, yeah. clear your mind and say, today is a new day. The past That's is it. the past. I can't change the past. You That's focus it. on the present. Today's a new day. What can yeah. I do to make today better? And yeah. you know what? In what little changes will have a huge impact on my life? Yeah. What can I do? And to realize that we all make mistakes as human beings. That's it. You know, people are you know the the worst critics and the, the people that are the hardest on the is themselves. You know, we tend to be yep. our worst critics, and we tend to be the worst when it comes to judging ourselves. Yeah. Where a lot of people don't even pay attention to a lot of the things that we're self conscious about. And, yeah. you know, and to just learn to love yourself. You know, I yeah. always say when you're brushing your teeth and you look in the mirror, are you happy with the person you see? Yeah. And if yeah. you're not happy with the person you see, well, what don't I like and what can I do to change it? You know, yeah. and yeah. and think of, you know, maybe set some short term goals and some long term goals, but don't beat yourself up in the head and think, oh, I have to accomplish them right away. You know, yeah. just yeah. be happy if you could accomplish one. And if you yeah. if it takes a week to accomplish one, that's great. You know, give yourself a pat on the back and do something to reward yourself, something yeah. that will make you happy, you know, and, and just keep doing that. And then once you see you, you start accomplishing these goals, I feel that your self worthiness, your self esteem yeah. starts to go up you start yeah. to feel better about yourself and then everything starts to to change yeah. you start to see yeah. changes in in your in your your mindset in in your personality in the way you yeah. think the way you act you know and you'll even notice that your body will feel better and you'll yes. feel more energetic you'll feel less stress your cortisone level won't be going through the roof yeah. and you'll yeah. feel healthier and it's just, it's amazing how things change. And, you know, even if you like music therapy, you know, you could put yeah. some subtle music that makes you feel good. You know, yep. you can put, you know, some people like that sound therapy. I love the chakra bowls, the vibration. Mm -hmm. And if you close your yeah. eyes and you meditate and you just listen to the vibration, it has like an effect on you. It has a very common effect on you. And each bowl really? has a different vibration and it's supposed yeah. to, it's supposed to affect each a different part of your body, different energies mm -hmm. of the body. And you do notice a difference when you do these things. So like yeah. little subtle things that don't take very long to do, you could actually yeah. do and actually make changes. And journaling, I think is a great way too. Like, I don't know how you feel about yes. journaling, but I, yeah. I like journaling and uh, what yeah. are your feelings on journaling? Oh, hundred percent. Especially if people are very um, language driven. So if if they're if they're really responsive or or if they really enjoy that kind of the the writing process and that's cathartic for them and it helps organize their thoughts. Those and I know you have you have the positivity and gravity mm -hmm. the gratitude journal. Like I, I don't mean to throw a, a plug for a product in here, but I mean, but but th that's it's it's extremely powerful for people to you do something like that because it, it reframes their challenges. It brings their awareness to each little concept. That's the beauty of that writing is it, it articulates, what am I feeling? Uh, you know, what did I learn from that? It can be tremendous later reviewing it, 
later yeah. and saying, oh man, look what I was dealing with at that time. I don't even re I didn't even remember how hard that was. That was super hard. And if I got through that, look what I can deal with, like whatever I'm dealing with today. If I got through that, I can get through what I'm dealing with today. Right. And so I agree a hundred percent if, and, and unique ways to journal too. It doesn't have to be a written word. It can be an audio journal, you know, where you just um, talk, you know, a lot of people on their smart device have uh, an audio recorder of some form or fashion where they can just truly um, add a statement to that and, and create an audio log or, yeah. uh, or, and that that's cool too, for future generations who want to hear about, you know, uh, different things. Like oftentimes we'll read about our grandparents as they sent written uh, letters to each other. Well, this yeah. is a thing that you can give as a legacy to, you know, generations to come. Um, so yeah, I agree a hundred percent journaling is powerful, whatever form it takes to bring our awareness to the present moment and to really organize, okay, what is happening? And, and, um, and then to, to experience a bit of empowerment that comes from just being aware people underestimate the power of that as well. Just yeah. taking some time for the awareness of, oh my gosh, I, I have had been dealing with back pain all day. I didn't even know that I was like irritable. I knew I was irritable, but I couldn't put my finger on what was happening. But you know, it's because I've been dealing with this pulled muscle or strain or whatever it is. Right. Um, bringing awareness that is so powerful. Oh, I agree. And when you, it's funny because when you brought up the journal, you said the word positivity and gratitude, you know, that I think that's the, the two keys that get you through life's challenges and life's yeah. obstacles. Because I think one in our society, we are driven by negativity. For some yep. reason, you know, people just love negativity. And a lot yep. of times it's because if they can focus on other prob people's problems, they don't have to focus mm. on their own. And yeah. so people are very emerged in, in negativity. And so that's all you see. If you go onto yeah. the news, you see negative things mostly. Yep. If you yeah. go onto social media, people love to boast and and yeah. drama to over dramatize things and make it negative. And yeah. really, positivity is key. Is mm -hmm. you know, it's you know, I you could if you could take any negative thing that happened to you and pull out one positive thing, yeah. you know, that yeah. that's huge. I think, and that yeah. can help you so much because think about it. If something really bad happened to you, you said, well, you know what, X, Y, and Z happened, but it made me a stronger person, or it mm -hmm. gave me experience. You know you know and yep. think of something that it gave you that was actually positive and and yeah. to have gratitude in our society especially in the united states we're so blessed but we don't realize it yeah. and you know we don't a lot of times we always say i want i want i want i don't have i don't have i don't have but we forget to think about what we do have and right. the, the biggest thing is that we don't realize you know how valuable things are until they're taken away from us and then Amen it's too late. And then we realize how valuable it was, and, it. you know, and, and people really have to, re, you know, be grateful for the little things in life, the people around them. Sometimes we take for granted because we're yeah. so used to having them. We're so used to them yep. doing whatever they do and, mm -hmm. you know, and God forbid if something happened and they're not there anymore. How are you going to yeah. feel? You know, I yeah. say, take a letter, write to each person that you care about, yeah. close it up and give it to them. And let yep. them know how precious they are in your life or just to go outside and take your shoes off and let your feet touch the grass and, and just, yeah. you know, close your eyes and take a little walk, even if it's around your backyard or, you know, or yeah. just go and, and get a fresh breath of air. Maybe if you have a porch or you have like a patio, you can go outside and just have a fresh cup of tea or coffee and, and just, you know, just enjoy the scenery around you, yeah. you know, and little things like that can make such a big difference or just going and looking over a flower and just smelling the flower and the aroma, the yeah. common sense of the aroma. Yeah. Yeah. Take the time to do it. Life is for living. Like we're not human doings. We're human beings. Take the time to do it. And and, and I'm saying this, especially for the men out there who are listening, who are, who are taught, you know, don't show your emotions. Don't do things like this. This is not a masculine thing, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, you need yeah. to be tough. You need to always be perfect. You need to always rely on yourself. No, stop, smell the flower, look at it, appreciate it. Say to your partner, whoever they are each morning, it's, an, it's something kind to, to honor the fact that they're, they're there, that you've shared mm -hmm. time together spend time with your your pets listen to your kids when they talk about a challenge when they come home from when they come home from work the little things just like you're saying they transform everything 
Yeah. If you have just a little bit of that, if you literally, you don't, and as far as the meditation goes, seriously, if you just take one minute, I would just encourage anybody listening to this who's like, meditation's too weird for me. It's not for me. I don't know. I don't, da, 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 da. do it for one minute. Yeah. One minute a day and just do that and see what happens. I would encourage you to do that. But yeah, I agree with you a thousand percent. Uh, it's important to do those things because you don't want to look around and and have been given this a tremendous gift of being alive and aware of it. And we spend it hating one another or yeah. blaming one another. We don't want to look back. And those are very awful moments um, for people that I've been around who are at the end of their experience, whatever this life is, and they're coming, you know, it's coming to an end. Um, it's, it's not somewhere you want to be. It's not something you want to experience. Take the time, look yeah. at that flower, smell that flower, do be present. Oh, a hundred percent, you know, and, and I, I think you made a good point too before is that, you know, it's, we have so many stereotypes and, and men were made to be strong. Men were not, men were made not to show their emotion, but yeah. men should show their emotions, you know, and yeah. it's all those repressed emotions that we, you know, both men and women that yeah. have so many problems, you know, it could yeah. cause you to be numb to the point where you don't even know how you're feeling anymore. Exactly. Uh, and, you know, and if you don't know how you're feeling, how are you going to heal yourself? That's it. It's I agree hundred percent. Yep. For both men and women. I did, and yeah, I agree with you. Any, anybody who you've been taught to stuff it down and ignore it. Uh, it's not going away. It's demanding to be felt. So once you process through it, that's when, that's when you get some real gains, you get some real growth is acknowledging it and, and owning it. And the beautiful thing is we're always in the present moment. So, yeah. um, the past and all the things that have happened there, it doesn't mean it has to happen again. It doesn't mean we have to repeat that. It doesn't mean that any of that defines you. It doesn't, it, it's something that has happened to you and something that you've experienced, but it doesn't own you. You're bigger than it, whatever it is. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I'd encourage you to, if anybody's listening to this and you're writhing with agony from things that you are, do have spent your entire life running from, or trying to ignore or trying to soothe in various unhealthy ways. Yeah. There is hope for you. There is hope. There is that. And it starts with you um, believing it. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And and like you said, also, when you come to your end, you know, you, you want to be able to leave this planet on a good note. You want to be able to feel like you, you put an imprint on this, on this earth. And it was a, a good legacy that you left behind. You don't want to have regrets. You don't want to have resentment. You don't want to have any of those negative emotions. You want to let go of those, you know, you, you know, you want to cross over with a good heart, a lightheaded heart, you know, and, and, you know, I, I think people have to really, you know, work today to be the person they want to be. And it's never too late. doesn't matter what age we are. Yeah. It's, it's never, it's never too late to change. That's it. That's the beautiful thing. That's that's what I love about your your, your presentation there to, to your left and my right. It's it's the legacy that you're creating. You took something um that was very, very, very troubling for you as a child. That was that was something you didn't ask for. Yeah. That was something that that happened. And and look what you've made of it. Look at all the, the suffering that you experienced and now the healing that you offer and all the lessons that you've learned from that. And that's a, that's a, that's a demonstration for us all to be aware of what you've been through. It doesn't define you. Um, and you can take something that's happened to you that's made you um, suffer to a, to a certain degree and you can transform that into something amazing. Yeah. And so, um, so, so whatever it is, whatever you're experiencing, um, that's, that's, we, we don't want to miss the opportunity that's there. If you're dealing with something that's causing you pain, yeah, um, that's an opportunity to connect because chances are you're not the only one who is experiencing that, that pain as well. And that can open a new door that will take you to places you never anticipated. I, I wonder, you know, when you were a child and dealing with all this and those, those, those moments, you know, it, that we often experience if we're in the hospital and we're dealing with the medical challenge that we didn't foresee, that we didn't want, that we didn't expect, that's rocking our world. And I don't want to speculate because I don't, I don't know your experience. So I, if I'm inaccurate in any way, please correct me. But, but oftentimes when people are in that hospital bed, writhing with 
a, a diagnosis or a challenge, it's not easy to see at that moment that it will become what it's become what, for you, like th that that it will be something that is powerful and is le like a powerful, fulfilling legacy of empowering people, of, of turning people away from suicide because they are in such pain about it that they want their life to end in this way where you're helping bring people back from that, you're articulating to them um, the gift that's that's inherent in there that they can lay hold of that can create tremendous connection and empowerment and growth and healing. Um, oftentimes in those dark nights of the soul and those hospital beds, we can't see it then. But uh, in time that comes and, and to have people like you speaking to them or creating, using this platform to communicate to them that it doesn't end there. And that's that is is actually the beginning of something uh, that can be quite beautiful if we choose to um, if we choose to make it that. I, I just encourage anybody who's going through those moments of suffering to to look to you as an example and to see what can happen when something painful or scary or completely life altering happens, and what can come of it. Thank you. I, I think what we need is. is what got me through my 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 challenges was was faith, courage, wisdom, strength, and hope. And in, in all my struggling, I just did not give up. I knew there had to be something better out there. And it was not easy. I went through yep. years, years of, of negative emotions, yep. denial, uh, sure. just being very rebellious. You know, if someone said yep. go left, I'd go right. You know, I yep. had to prove sure. that I was just like everybody else. And, you know, there were moments, many moments where you fall into a hole and you just feel depressed. You feel like, you know, it's not getting yeah. better because every time you move forward, I always felt like I was getting knocked back two more steps. And it was like, will it ever end? Will it ever end? Right. But I refused to give up. And that I think that's what got me through it was I refused yeah. to give up. But it was the the you know, and I, I, I actually, I couldn't drive for a while. They, you know, they asked me to stop driving and I didn't drive for 15 years. So like you mm. talk about post COVID, I felt in prison in my home yeah. for, because I had to rely on everybody else. And I was not the person that liked to rely on anybody. And mm. it was a, it was a definitely a, a very challenging time in my life that lasted a very long time, but it was positivity and gratitude that got me through, you know, and being honest, honesty is key. We have to be honest with ourselves. Yeah, and, you know, and I think those things could actually go a long way. And when we look inside ourselves and we look at the, the strengths and the negatives and, you know, like the strengths and the weaknesses of ourselves. And mm -hmm. we really think about, you know, is this what I want for myself? The weaknesses yeah. and the strengths, you know, what could I do to make, you know, use these strengths to benefit myself and to help others. And, yeah. And, you know, there was, it was that mentality that helped me get to the point I am today, but it was not, not, I refuse to give up. I just, I, I refuse no matter how hard it got, no matter how many times I felt depressed, no matter how many times I got angry, I, mm -hmm. I refuse to get, I give up. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's so important. It's so important to believe that there's better and you'll get there and to acknowledge what you're going through with honesty and say, look, I hate this. I hate this. I do not like this. I, I, I do not want this, you know, and, and it's important to just be honest because, you know, don't, it, it's, it's, it's counterproductive to yeah. lie, lie to ourselves or act like it's fine when it's not. And that's why it's so important for us to have these support structures in our lives who, yeah. who are like, who will call us on our BS, right. Exactly. Who will say, you know, be like, Hey, I, you're angry. I know it. And it's okay. Let's talk, you know, right. or, um, let's get it out. Let's deal with it. Exactly. Um, and have non-judgment there uh, and empathy. Th those those type of people, if you encounter them in their life, they're gold. So <laughs> maintain that relationship. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you had to take three things that you wanted to emphasize to the listeners, what are those three things from today's conversation that you think you would really want to focus on and, and emphasize? Um, I would just say, the first, first and foremost, I, I just want to thank everybody that's listening to this, uh, no matter when or where you're listening to this. Thank you for taking the time to do it. And if you arrived here, however that has happened, I just want you to know that you're important and that you matter. Um, that's a fact. It's not some nice talk. That's you literally uh, have a massive opportunity. If you are 
breathing right now and hearing this, you have a tremendous opportunity that's on your plate right now. You are in the present moment. Your past is gone. Your future is not here yet. If you've had a horrible past, sometimes we speculate that the future is going to be horrible as well. That's not a fact. Yeah. It doesn't have to be that way. And so this is a powerful moment that I just want each person, if, if you're experiencing this or hearing this right now, to just take a moment, bring your awareness to who you are, where you are, how you feel, and uh, and just be aware that there's better for you if you're if there's a reason why you are here and you are craving it and you feel it within you, then that's, there's a reason for it. And, yeah. and there are wonderful things ahead for you. Mind blowing things that you, you haven't maybe even considered but to persevere at this moment. And if you're contemplating uh, or writhing in pain and you want uh, to end that pain, Please don't do that by suicide. Please call a crisis hotline phone number or 911 if you need to. Whatever you need to do, do not act on that. Sober up if you're intoxicated. Just take the time to do what you need to do to be safe right now. And then um, reach out to professionals nearby to get the help that you need. And because there is hope, whatever you're dealing with is not a life sentence. Yeah. Uh, and, and so uh, whatever you're dealing with there, and then if it's not, if, if, the, if you're in a crisis situation and that kind of recedes, but you're still dealing with some suffering, then celebrate it, mm -hmm. celebrate it and look with gratitude, just alter your focus a little bit on all these things that happened to me versus I can choose to respond to them. And, mm -hmm. and what has happened to me doesn't define me. I get to choose what happens from here forward and who I am from here forward. Yeah. And you will learn some skills that will empower you, that will help you grow, that will get you to places where, where whatever your dream is, whether it's amazing things like Stacy has done here with, the, with her books and her service and her kindness and uh, to others and empowering others, whatever you're going to do, that's, something yours will unfold for you yeah. stick around and stick around for the time being to to find that you will just don't give up keep going you'll find ways that are effective and the answer is there are you ready to accept it are you ready to let it grow you as it wants to yeah uh, that's i guess the message that i would have um, for anybody listening to this and it's an amazing message. I, I I love what you're doing. Now, you have so many services that you offer. Can you talk, tell everybody about the different things that you do to help others? Sure. sure. Yeah, no, thank you so much. Um, I, I'm here to uh, work with people, whether that's one-on-one -on -one, uh, or in an organizational setting where maybe your leadership team is looking to reduce conflict, is looking to create healthy staff. If you're dealing with staff burnout, you're having trouble retaining employees, uh, you have employees that are frustrated, angry, uh, feeling like they're a number, don't trust you as a leader. If those are the, the experiences that you're having and you want those to stop and you want a healthy workplace where there's cohesion, where people are getting along, where there's lightness in the air, where they're doing phenomenal work and getting it all done mm -hmm. uh, in a way where, where they're truly operating in a cohesive way and, and being there for one another and loyal to you as a leader because you've created a healthy environment for them to apply their energy, time, and talents. Yeah. Um, I'd be happy to have a conversation with you. I'd love to work with your team to, to help create a thriving organization or team in wherever you're at. So, uh, and that's also individual coaching. A lot of leaders need a space to have non-judgmental listening where they uh, are able to express their frustrations or process their emotions in a way where it doesn't bleed through to their relationships at work. Yeah. Um, I can oftentimes what I'll be is a sounding board for folks. So if you need to process things that are frustrating at work without you lashing out or doing something to tarnish those relationships. That's another service that I can provide, but whether it's speaking, whether it's books, um, and I wanted to offer to everybody here too, anybody who listens to Stacy's episode here, I want to provide any listeners who reach out to me on benbedick.com and sign up uh, or subscribe. I'm going to give you a free copy of Navigating Information Overload, Empowering Employee Wellness in the Digital Age. A lot of people are overwhelmed, too much information, not enough heart. And so I'll give you a free copy of that. And anyone who donates any amount of money, whether it's $5 or $10 uh, or $1,000 or $10,000 or a million dollars to 
uh, Central City Cyber School in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, I want to also give you a copy of this book. Um, this is a school that's doing amazing things in Milwaukee with a population of children who have been through uh, a ton of challenges and are doing amazing. Their staff is amazing and they're doing amazing work on behalf of children in that community. If you donate anything uh, to them, um, you'll get a free copy of this book. Uh, it's the least I can do to offer my thanks to those who empower the amazing staff at Central City Cyber School in Milwaukee. That's wonderful. Oh my goodness. And where can people find you on your website? Sure. So benbiddick.com or humancapital.vip. The most important uh, thing of value in this world, in my opinion, is people. So that's who I invest in. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. This has been wonderful, Ben. Um, yeah. I, I thank you so much for being on the show. I hope that we'll see you again. And yeah. this has been amazing. Thank you so much. You're, you have a beautiful heart and Thank your you. insights are, are wonderful. And I love how you approach things. And I love the information and, and some of the tools and strategies that you provided today were amazing mm -hmm. too. So thank you so much for coming yeah. on the show. And, well, and the, the honor is all mine, Stacey. Thank you so much. You've created an amazing platform and wish you and your listeners the very best um, ultimate success. You are, you are a success as you are. Um, so now it's going to be great to watch the universe just pile it on and <laughs> more and more. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Oh my goodness. Ben, have a wonderful day. You too. Take good care. You too. Bye, Stacey. Bye-bye.